Next question is from Five Foot Lisa Ruiz. Is there any scenario where you would recommend a fat burner? Never. Yeah. Well, so, okay. So I have I have a love hate relationship with fat burners. So here's the the hate part. Okay. Um, they don't burn body fat. Now, I know studies. There are studies that are done on on compounds like soniferin and yohimbi and colis forscoli, for example, that will show that it in enhances fat mobilization and the study and you know all this stuff. but really what's what's happening especially the studies that show that people lose weight so they'll take some of these products and then they'll lose a little bit of weight and so they say oh it's the fat burner uh, that's burning the body fat. Really, what's typically happening is the fat burner is changing the person's behavior. Yes, it's yeah. no different than if I put a shock collar on you and le- and I shocked you every fifteen minutes all day long. That shock collar would be a fat burner. Yeah, because it'll make same, you move. The, the same the same theory I in like those that studies. Idea. Well, well, no, it's, it's exactly what it is. It's mm-hmm. what Sal is alluding to right now is that it gives you like energy, like cat. And normally they have caffeine, and so it makes you jittery or moving around and like mm-hmm. we're. It's the same reason why uh, Adderall uh, makes people lose weight, right? It's the like Adderall, um, it makes you move more and it makes your appetite uh, go down. And this is where the fat loss effects uh, come from with fat burners. Now, before you get excited and go buy the next fat burner, there's you know what goes up uh, must also come down. And the body does start to adapt to these fat burners by down-regulating receptors and changing your hormones and changing your body's own natural chemical uh, production of certain things like norepinephrine and epinephrine to the point where, and, and we can all relate to this with a very common popular stimulant known as caffeine, you get to the point where then you need the product to feel normal. So mm. if you can think back, you know, and maybe it's too far away to, to remember, but if you can think back to the time you first had coffee, the magic that you felt, it was like, oh my gosh, I could do everything. I'm so happy. I'm so productive. Memories. This is incredible, right? But if you drink it every single day, after a few months, you get to the point where you wake up and you're like, I need coffee to just operate. Now I need it just to feel normal. What's happened is your body's normal has adjusted so that the coffee now makes you normal. So now you need the coffee to be normal. You're no longer getting any of those benefits. Fat burners work the same way. So you take the fat burners, you feel all the whatever for a month or two, then you're taking them, now you start to feel normal, nothing's happening anymore, then you go off of them, because you have to at some point, and then you go like through a one to three week period where you feel like garbage because your normal's down here, you don't have anything to bring you back up to normal, your body's got to readjust. That point you're making is the same reason why, too, you see the evolution of pre-workouts. Mm-hmm. I, I remember a time when you know fifty to one hundred milligrams of caffeine was uh, that was a pre workout. That was a pre workout. Your pre workouts now have three hundred to four hundred and fifty uh, milligrams of caffeine. Uh, now no. that was not that was not a thing just ten years ago. No. So, but it's but because so many people drink you know Starbucks every single morning, which has got a hundred and something milligrams of it, they needed to make the pre workout so much more in order for people to feel it. Mm-hmm. Because if you gave everybody a fifty milligram caffeine type of pre workout. They'd be like, this shit doesn't work, mm-hmm. and it doesn't. It's not that it doesn't work; it's that your body's adapted to taking in 100 to 200 milligrams of caffeine on a regular day. That if I gave you another 150 to 200 milligrams in a pre-workout, you would think it's nothing to you. Well, so so just to give you an example, right? So uh, you look at the energy drink market, right? I'm old enough to remember Red Bull was the first energy drink to hit the market, and everybody was like, "Oh my gosh, this stuff is crazy." A, a normal can of Red Bull has 80 milligrams of caffeine. Okay. Now we have uh, Monster and all these other competitors. That 250. Are, right. Mm-hmm. 200, between 160 to 250 milligrams of caffeine. Before Red Bull, do you know what the, the energy drink was? Classic Jolt Cola. Do you guys remember Jolt Cola? Yeah, yeah. what is that? I think was 50 or so 60 much milligrams? Sugar in that? Yeah, it was like 50 to 60 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah. You know, it was like three times as much caffeine as a normal Coke. And, you know, people would drink it and get all freaked out. And so, but now look at that market. It's exploded because we've gotten ourselves. So adapted that we need more and more to to feel anything. So that's my my love hate with with fat burners. Can they work in the short term if they suppress your appetite, give you energy? Yes. In the long term, probably not. And the withdrawals are just the way, look. If you if you feel shitty going off coffee, and you and we all do, you go off coffee for a week and you feel like garbage. It's worse with fat burners. There's much more stimulants in there. And going off those, it should just feel terrible. Not to mention, too, you're splitting hairs, too. So even the yes. even the bit that it does help, yeah. I mean, is is negated by the extra ounce of cheese you throw on or yeah. the, you know, the, the soda it's you decide It's still the to behaviors have. that matter. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the it's not it's not enough to make that big of a change. And to Sal's point, it's only a matter of time before your body's adapted to that anyways. And so it's like it's a it's pointless.